Hello. In my last video, I showed you my floppy disk cleaning machine up and running, but it was never tested so I don't know how effective it is. In this video, I'm going to experiment with several different methods to actually clean dirty disks, including by hand, and I'm going to use some different cleaning liquids too, and we'll compare the success by looking at the readability of each disk before and after cleaning. First up, let's take a look at some dirty disks, and I've got a box full of them from a random eBay purchase, and it's a shame looking through all of these as there's quite a lot of original disks here. I've already had a quick look at those originals, and they're all pretty bad already. However, for consistency, I'm going to grab some of the cover disks from this box. After all, there's copies of those all over the internet anyway. So taking a closer look at this one, it's already bad. So I'm going to pull it apart so you can have a closer look at the problem. It's a little difficult to see, but when I get the angle just right, instead of a perfectly shiny surface, you can see that strange, patterned, less shiny area all over the surface. That's most likely some kind of mould or dried on dirt or something. And the pattern comes from the fabric inside used to keep the disc surface free from dust. It's ironic that the thing that was actually keeping them clean is actually causing this pattern. Maybe they absorb moisture over time or something? Anyway, whatever it is, it prevents the disc from reading properly. Now I've recently taken to storing all floppy disks with a pack of silica gel, just in case. Now we don't actually know if this is the result of damp, but this certainly is a good precaution regardless. Now this isn't the only thing that can go wrong with disks. There's also the possibility that the magnetic coating on the disc surface has started to come off, or it's been scratched by the drive head, and if that's happened, there's no way you can save them anyway. And finally, the metal centre of the disc can actually become detached, as the glue weakens, making it impossible for the disc to rotate at all. Now it is possible to glue this back together, but in reality, if it's got this bad, then the disc is probably unreadable anyway. However, we're only going to focus on the ones that look dirty, and if you've got to the stage where they just won't read properly and you've made sure your drive is clean, then you really don't have much to lose by trying to clean them. It's also worth noting that once you've finished cleaning your discs, you should probably just take a backup and treat the original as trash, especially if you use isopropanol to clean it. It's actually really good at dissolving glue, so eventually it will cause the metal centre to detach. Another point worth noting is each time you try to read one of these discs, you must clean the drive heads. Not only could you make the drive heads dirty again, but you also risk spreading some of that dirt to another disc, and that dirt might potentially damage the next disc you insert. I've previously made a video showing you how you can make one of these disc cleaners yourself, rather than having to pull the drive apart. And it's a lot cheaper than the ones I've seen being sold online, and they're also quite effective. I've designed four different tests. Two of these will be using my crazy disc cleaning machine, and the other two of these will be by hand, using cotton buds and a disc shutter opener. Now regarding the actual cleaning, the first set of these tests will focus on using isopropanol to clean the surface. And the second set will use distilled water and some washing up liquid. Why distilled water? Well, especially here, the tap water is very hard and the last thing I want to do is leave a layer of lime scale or other minerals on the disc surface. And to help work out which of the methods work best, I'm going to repeat each of the methods a total of four times using four discs per test, and I'll mark each disc with a colour from that group shown here. Now it's very important to make sure the disc is completely dry before you try to read any data back from it. This isn't to prevent liquid getting into the drive, this is more to do with what's going on inside the disc. Again, look at the disc I've pulled apart before. See those fabric pads either side? Well. Remember, those are designed to remove minor dirt and dust that collects on the surface of the disc. However, during cleaning, they also soak up a lot of the cleaning liquid, and being inside the disc is actually quite difficult to dry. And even the slightest amount of dampness causes extra friction which will prevent the disc spinning at the correct speed, meaning the data won't be readable. I suspect the drying stage of my cleaning machine might actually be quite useful for this and should help speed things up a little. Now I'm not the only person to try these methods. Not only does Google turn up several results, but there's also Glenn's Casual Retro Gamer or CRG YouTube channel. There's a whole video there just trying this out. Now to make this as fair as possible, I've selected 16 random cover discs, all with signs of mould on them, and I'll start by relabeling each of the discs to help us track the results. Now to record their state at the start, so we can see which method is the most effective. And these cover discs will most likely be standard Amiga DOS discs, and I want to use the Amiga test kit to read these. However, I don't want to risk ruining the floppy drive in my Amiga. 
So I'm going to use a PC floppy drive and a Mister along with my modded Mister Minimig core and one of my Mister floppy prototype to record the state of all the disks, cleaning and testing the drive between each disk. Now I could have chosen to format and verify the disks instead, but this test is about preservation rather than finding good working blank disks. And the first thing I'll do is test the drive with a good known working disk. And so you don't have to watch all of this, I'll speed it up. Wow, 24 discs and one hour later? I was amazed that some of these discs could actually read perfectly fine. Some of them, oh my, the sound they made was ridiculous. For example, listen to this. That grinding noise is not good. Not only is the drive not able to spin the disc at a constant speed, but that noise is probably also dirt further scratching the surface of the disc. Now normally I'd suggest you clean them first, but that's not what this experiment is all about. There was also another disc that sounded like the screech of the rails I've heard on the London Underground. It's no surprise that these were the discs that showed up all being bad. So I skipped these and had to replace them with some extra discs. Anyway, looking through the results, the numbers on screen in each box is the number of missing sectors on that track. And a normal Amiga DOS double density disc has 11 sectors per track, that's 11 each side, and 80 tracks are being read, so a total of 1760 sectors. And using that number, I'm able to calculate a health value for each disc. The lower the percentage, the worse state the disc is in, <laughs> just like a computer game. The next job is to sort them by their health, and then deal them into four groups so that each group gets a set of discs with the widest range of health possible. And with all those discs sorted into four piles, as you might be able to see behind me somewhere, it's actually time to do some cleaning, and we'll start with the isopropanol. <laughs>
And now onto the distilled water and washing up liquid. And don't worry, I've removed all of the isopropanol from the cleaning machine and I've replaced those spinning pad things too. You can see the tank now contains a slightly green liquid. And I've also ran this a few times just to make sure all the liquid gets onto those pads just to help it start. It was interesting to hear the pump struggle a little with that slightly thicker liquid. So let's see if it made any difference. Phew, that sure did take a long time, and they're all sitting here now completely dry. The drying was interesting. The discs cleaned in my machine with isopropanol needed around about 15 minutes of Bonnie Tyler drying time. The ones cleaned by hand took about the same sort of time, but the ones cleaned with water and washing up liquid took much, much longer, around 45 minutes each. My guess is that a lot of liquid soaked up inside the fabric inside the disc. I'd suggest that if you don't care about the actual case, it might actually be quicker to remove the disc and clean it directly. Then temporarily insert it back into a clean case to read it back. I'm sure it'd be much quicker. When cleaning one of the discs, I was really surprised. After cleaning most discs, those cotton bud Q-tip things still look white. But one disc, disc number 10, when cleaning with isopropanol, kept leaving the cotton a brownish color. Now I'm not sure if this is dirt or just the magnetic material coming loose. So it's worth just keeping an eye on that disc when we look at the results. One thing I realised when replacing these uh, spinny things in my machine is that I didn't do any form of calibration on them to see how hard they're pressing on the disc surface. Now this was fairly obvious as the discs on the back always seem to dry much quicker, suggesting it wasn't pressing as hard. Anyway, they're now all waiting to be retested. So pause this video and write in the comments section below which of the four methods you think will be the most successful. Have you written something? Good, let's get on with the testing.
with all of the reading done, let's have a look at the results. And it's strange because statistics don't really prove everything. Here's the results, all added up, grouped into four experiments, and it's quite interesting. And if I add a simple key, you can see that the majority of the discs showed improvements. Except there's more to this than that. What makes it a little harder to work out which method is best is the way I distributed the discs between each test set. The first group had slightly more of the worst discs, whereas the last test had slightly more of the better ones. But if we take a look at the average afterwards, we can at least see each method improve the readability of our discs. However, if we look at the percentage change, then the results are more spread out. Now you could draw all sorts of conclusions from this, but in reality that sample size is too small to really prove anything. But it does show that washing up liquid in distilled water is a good alternative to isopropanol. But there's more to this and it's not immediately obvious from those results. Let's take a look at what the discs look like before and after. This is the first set, cleaned in the machine with isopropanol. Now looking at the results after cleaning, things aren't quite as clear. Yes, there's less red, but it's moved around. Mind you, if we take a look at the actual disc used on the first row, you can clearly see that it's really badly damaged. You shouldn't be able to see through all of that. That'll have been caused by dirt on the head scratching around the disc as it spins. So the results for that disc are kind of not really a surprise. This set was cleaned by hand using isopropanol. Again, you can see improvements, especially on the third disc. This is the disc that all that brown stuff came off. Hmm, it definitely shows a massive improvement. But note that the fourth disc actually got worse on the upper side. Whilst nowhere near as bad as the last disc I showed you, with this disc I can just see the odd tiny little pinprick of light through the disc. The third group is the cleaning machine but with washing up liquid and distilled water. And again, an improvement! But there's now errors where they weren't before. Maybe the disc has got further damage during the first read, or perhaps maybe a rinse cycle is needed. Do I need to add another stage to my machine? And finally, cleaning the disc by hand using washing up liquid. Well, all four of these discs read perfectly after this step, but just remember that these discs actually started off slightly better than the other tests. The first disc here might be a little bit confusing, but when putting it in the drive for reading, I spotted something stuck to the underside of the disc, and it's possible it may have affected the spinning speed of the disc. But as we can't go back in time, we'll never know. Some very interesting results, and I'm pleased to say that I'm fairly convinced that my machine actually does a fairly good cleaning job. But by far its most useful function is actually drying discs. As I said before though, it's probably easier just to remove the disc and clean that directly so the inner fabric doesn't get wet, allowing you to also see if there's any physical damage to the disc too. And on the subject of isopropanol versus washing up liquid, well it's kinda hard to say, but it looks like the washing up liquid performs as well, if not better, but it does take longer to dry. It's also less likely to dissolve the glue holding the plastic part of the disc to the metal piece, and that's a definite advantage. Whichever method you choose to do, Remember that this should be treated as a last resort, and you might find it best to clean and then read and then repeat the process many times, remembering to clean the drive between each attempt. And then, finally, combine all those read datas into one disk image. Because my results clearly show that whilst you might improve some areas, you might make other areas worse. And with all that, I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.